Well, I want to bring in Marsha Kramer now. She joins me here in studio to break down some more of today's developments. Marsha, I feel like there's a lot to digest here. Um, you know, there's the security concerns. There's also when the former president is going to arrive in Manhattan, what that is going to look like. And as the nation, as the world watches this all unfold, we have to remember that this is a case for the Manhattan district attorney. We're talking not federal charges here. Well, you know, that's true, and I think that there are several things going on here. There's the security, and there's the political mm -hmm. uh, situation. Now, security-wise, my sources tell me that there's been a deal worked out to try to bring the former president in the back of the courthouse. There's a sally port, actually, in back of the courthouse where buses bring people from Rikers Island. They can bring him in to the rear of the courthouse, and it goes directly into the arraignment part. The unknown question Would there is... there be no cameras there, then? No. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, it'll drive right in. Okay. Now, th th that's the hope. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it'll, you know, be in a, a an SUV, blacked out windows. He could roll them down. You know, it is President Trump. However, he once he's been arraigned, and they go through the process of, of. Um, taking his picture, fingerprinting him, et cetera, he, and they set bail, he could walk out the front door or the back door. If he walks out the front door, he has a press conference. Be, or people are going to be there waiting, he'll talk. Or he decides not to. It depends on what he wants to do. It depends on what his lawyers tell them that he should do. And, and he's anybody's guess whether he listens. The other concern, I think, for New York City is to show that the prosecutor can give him a fair trial. Mm. It's very important. Remember that we've said this is a charge; it's not a conviction. Yep. And so they're going to take, they're going to work really hard to show an impartiality to show that you can come here, you can be indicted, and even if you are a former president, you can get a fair trial. And a lot of that is going to depend on which judge is assigned the case and how he handles it. Now, the, there's been some talk that the judge who handles handled the other Trump cases, the case of Alan Weisselberg and others would get the same, would get the case because there's a connection. And he was regarded as handling the case in a dignified um, manner. So he might get the case, but it could go into something they call a wheel, where they pull out a name and that person gets the case. It's uncharted territory, we don't really know. But after that, there's going to be a whole bunch of pretrial motions, motions about fair trial, motions about whether he can be tried here in Manhattan with all the publicity. Now, you could argue that this is, you know, of world interest. So is there any place in the entire planet <laughs> that, <laughs> that he, won't be watching that <laughs> won't be watching yes. and they can you know can he get a fair trial so I, you probably could argue I think the prosecutors could argue that Manhattan is as fair as any other place in the entire universe because mm -hmm. everybody's gonna know and everybody knows the story but the thing that's interesting here I think is the fact that um, Alvin Bragg chose to make this case after declining to bring the prosecution when he first came into the office. And it follows a long history of people declining the case, including the U.S. Attorney in the Southern District of Manhattan, the Federal Elections Commission mm -hmm. that decided to bring the case, and then the former District Attorney Cy Vance. There's also a question that we haven't discussed before, and that's the statute of limitations. You know, this is something that happened in 2016. Yes, before he was elected president. Before he was elected president. So usually the statute of hiring, whether it's a misdemeanor or a felony, could be two years or five years. That's all expired. So they're going to have to make the argument that the statute of limitations was told or paused by the fact that he was president and couldn't be here and be investigated. But that's going to be another argument that his attorneys will make, that this should be totally dismissed because the statute of limitation expired a long time ago. So we have to wait and see what happens. You know, we only have about another 30 seconds left here, um, but I just want to quickly touch on the job that the the NYPD is going to have before. Oh them. my God. You know, we don't know what kind of protests are going to happen. We don't know what kind of crowds are going to happen. The challenges that they're going to face are going to be extreme. They're going to be immense, but I think that this NYPD, under this mayor and this police commissioner, they're up to the challenge. Marcia, thank you. Your insight, always incredible.